Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E o último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, happy Sunday. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the World Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us in this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, September 12th. And for the readings of this Sunday, we will read, first read from Prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, 50, verses 5 to 9. The Responsorial Psalm is Psalm 116, 116, 116. Second reading, From the, second, from the letter of James, of St. James, chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. And the gospel is from St. Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 to 35. We can start the reading of the Word of God for this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult or spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will con Contend, contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare my guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is, it is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilt? That's what prophet Isaiah is telling us today. He's talking about the this, this, the suffering servant, the one that we apply to Jesus. So the church and the, the church always saw in this, uh, in these chapters, in these verses of the, the servant who suffer for his people, the image of Christ. When it says, I did not turn my back. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. We can see here the crucified Christ that was given to us, was given to all the torture that he went through, but for the love of us. And Isaiah continues, the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. We know that Jesus wasn't disgraced. He was going through those sufferings to save us. I have sat my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. He who vindicates me is near. That should be a sentence that we carry in our hearts when we go through difficult moments. 
to say that the one who vindicates me is near. The one who is my defensor is near. The one who loves me and cares for me is near. If we repeat that to ourselves, we will never feel lonely because we know that he is near. As he was near of as was he was near at the cross of Jesus, he is near to each one of us. The responsorial Psalm Psalm 116 says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol had laid on to me, had laid, ho laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saves me. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from fears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The psalm is also singing God's protection, knowing that He is the one who is gracious to us and who protects us. And second reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you said you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If brothers or sisters are without clothing or lack, lack daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and, and I, by my works, will show you my faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's a, a topic that is always discussed in, among many churches. Paul, James here is telling us that faith without work, it is, it is not enough. We need to show works in our faith. There are many that discuss saying, no, faith is enough. Faith is what we need. But James is very clear when he says, If you go to someone and says, go in peace, may God bless you, be in peace, be happy. But this person is poor, have no house to live, has no food to eat. How could this person be really in peace? They can be peace in their hearts. They may have peace in their hearts, but their bodily needs is, is still there. They still lack bodily needs, so it's, they lack food. So we need to show our faith through work. And James ends today in verse 18 says, By my work I will show you my faith. And we need to do that. By our work to show our faith. What does that mean? Your work, it means your dedication to others, the way that you help, the way that you give of yourself and of your money, of your means. By the way that you do this, you will show your faith. We show our faith many times by devotions and prayers and wearing a crucifix um, and talking about Jesus. Yes, we show our faith like this. But James is telling us that to show our faith, helping others, that's a great act of faith. And people can see the Lord that we serve if we do that. Imagine if people look at us saying, I can see Jesus through your actions. I can see the God you serve through your actions. That's a, a beautiful thing, a beautiful ac accomplishment that a Christian can a beautiful compliment that a Christian can receive, that they that people see Jesus through our actions. And gospel for this Sunday is Mark chapter eight verses twenty-seven to thirty-five.
Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the day he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this quite openly. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking, looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are getting, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowds with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who want to save it. Those who want to save it will lose it. Those who want to lose it will save it. Jesus suffered for us. He gave himself for us. And when he openly said what was going to happen to him and Peter said no Lord far it be from you no Lord it won't happen to you how what does Jesus call Peter Satan saying far from me Satan and why does he call him Satan because his mind was set on worldly things for his mind was sat on worldly things, not on divine things. If Peter's mind was sat on divine things, he would understand the necessity of Jesus' suffering, the necessity of him um, being crucified and dying for the humanity. But as Peter's mind was sat on earthly things, he couldn't see it. And that's why he said, No, far it be from you, Lord. And how many times our minds are sat on worldly things and we cannot understand God's will. We don't have wisdom, the wisdom from on high, the wisdom from our Lord to understand what He's asking of us. And we are called to understand. Okay, many times may not understand, but to accept. To accept the divine design of God. Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him. How many times we it's just like we get God aside and say, "Hey, let's have a talk. Hey, this is not right. What are you talking about?" We do that with God, but we shouldn't. We should accept and ask him for wisdom to understand what he wants to tell us. Wisdom to understand, wisdom to love, wisdom to to give our lives, because if we want to save it, we will lose it. Every time that we want to save our lives, we are going to lose it. But when we give it away, when we say, Here, Lord, is my life. Here is what I have. Here is what I am. Do what pleases you. Then we are gaining it. Then we are receiving it back. So may the Lord bless us on this Sunday, on the meditation of His sacred word. And may we understand that it is by giving our lives that we will receive it. Amen.